Tom Whipple. Thank goodness you're here, Tom, because I don't understand a word of this. Help me. Help me out here. <laughs> Um, so it's, I mean, look, it's, it, it's great fun. It's, it's great news, news for uh, mouse kind. Um, <laughs> they have managed to, so the scientists have made an announcement uh, yesterday at a big genetics conference in London. Um, the scientists have managed to turn, take a skin cell yes. from a male mouse and turn it into an egg. Um, and the, the way he's done that is he's turned it back into a stem cell, which are these cells, cells that can become any other kind of cell yeah. um except it can't become an egg because it's a male x x y chromosome cell yeah so what they needed to do was knock off the y chromosome add in an x chromosome and that's a, that's doing a deep disservice to the complexity of the work that they did yeah um but effectively create an xx cell from this x y cell and then coax it into becoming an egg and that's what they did. And then they fertilised the egg, and they got little mouse pups. And the little mouse pups were fine. And I should say this isn't the first time that they've done this, but this is the first time that someone's done it. I think, and the mouse pups have actually been fine. They've been quite quite sad mouse pups, and they they died relatively quickly before these ones. These ones lived a full and happy mousey life, and um, they they had two dads and two genuine dads. So, 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 hang on, I still don't really understand. I'm pretending I do because this is my job and I have to look as if I'm doing a professional, professional job, but I don't. I don't understand how come those sweet little mice pups that are doing so well and having a lovely little mousy life and enjoying it, which is great, how come they're related to both dads and there's no mums? So you've got you've got one mouse who is involved in a largely conventional sense. He he supplies the sperm, right? And, uh, which is is used by IVF. The other mouse has a skin cells been taken off that mouse, which has then been converted through this process into an egg. Right. So you have an egg that is related to one male mouse and a sperm that is completely normally related to the other male mouse. You put the two together, you get a mouse with two dads. But don't you need a mummy somewhere with a womb and things like that? Yes, yeah, so yeah. So you haven't the, mentioned that at all. No wonder I didn't understand a word you were talking about. There has to be a mummy, otherwise they can't have a baby, can they? On International Women's Day or just after it, we should acknowledge the role of the surrogate mouse in the, in the entire palaver. We yes. definitely should. I think you've massively underplayed the role of the mouse with the womb, which is the female mouse, which is absolutely essential for this to happen at all, right? So essentially, the female mouse has been has had an egg implanted in her womb, and that egg has been grown from the skin cell of one male mouse and that male mouse is the lovely gay partner of the other gay male mouse and then the other partner has has impregnated the egg with sperm so we've got an egg made out of a skin cell sperm from one male mouse skin cell from another male mouse but you still need the lady mouse or you've got nothing at all you still la lady mice should not be concerned that they're redundant no good um, they, they are they are the surrogate and they are crucial to the process um but they are not producing a biologically related mouse they are they are an incubator for the two gay dads mouse i mean we, we, we can't impute the sexuality of mice obviously I, but uh yes yeah the, the sort of putatively gay mice right and and this idea that you can coax an egg out of a cell a completely different cell is that the sort of thing that at some point we think will happen for humankind and not just mouse kind? Um, yeah, so that, that process is, is, that's how stem cells do it. You sort of, you've got a stem cell and you give it the kind of environment that you would expect for that cell to become in. And it's a quite astonishing process. But yeah, they are, they are looking at humans. They're looking at humans because actually this, this originally began because they wanted to cure, not cure, they wanted to give fertility to women who, who have this thing called Turner syndrome, which means they've got one X chromosome that's inactive and doesn't really work. And the simplest way of seeing whether you could replace an X chromosome would be this, the process that they did. So they want to look at humans for that reason and maybe for the gay dance reason as well. But there are big technical problems. It's a lot harder to do this with human eggs. And obviously there are massive ethical problems which they haven't even got into and they freely acknowledge, you know, you would need a big societal discussion about this.
Right, and but 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 obviously it's front page of the Times. We take that very seriously. It's written by you. We take it even more seriously. We can't help our brains rushing into the future and imagining this happening and and being I don't know and 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 women therefore being kind of womb caretakers of babies conceived using DNA from two chaps and no woman at all. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I personally would still choose the traditional method um, with, with my wife. But uh, yeah, I acknowledge it. But we, we already have the situation where you have surrogate parents who act in this way very altruistically Yes. Um, for, for, for different reasons. So you, you can understand that's happening. But mm. there are also plenty of safety reasons why you would really want to look carefully at this. These are not, you know, we, we don't know quite what's happened to mm. these eggs and, and quite the extent to which they really are totally analogous to uh to normal eggs so there's there's a heck of a lot of things that need to be looked at safety and just practical, to, uh, technological and, and just to ask a, a question which will reveal my c grade at biology o level to my shame you'll be horrified but 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 what about female characteristics do you need a female to be part of the conception to imbue the child or the offspring with female characteristics or can a can a, an egg culled or cavorted or created from a from a male skin cell contribute the right female characteristics to a child well as, as far as the mice are concerned this is this is dna which is going to do its shuffling and they might end up with the y chromosome from the dad all the x chromosome from the dad and they might end up with a, a male or a female but i don't think there's any reason to believe that these mice are going to be any more confused about their gender than mice normally are. I think they're going to have a, a perfectly normal masculine or feminine upbringing. Well, you could ask Mickey and Minnie. I mean, there are many, many mice. What about that mouse who saw a, that little one who saw a mouse where there on the stair? The mouse who lived in the windmill in Old Amsterdam. I mean, there's many a mouse who's had all kinds of existential dilemmas and problems, haven't they? Well, I think we, you, all you're demonstrating there is the versatility and stoicism of mice and their ability to cope with with all manner of, of difficult situations, so I have confidence in, confidence in mouse kind that they will navigate this as they have in the past, other challenges. It's been a pleasure, a delight. It's been surreal in many ways, but it's been great. That was Tom 